Memory management is a crucial topic in software development, and that's because it deals with how your program stores and retrieves data, and we don't have unlimited storage space and unlimited time, so we need to be careful on how we do these things in our programs so that our programs will run optimally and efficiently. When I first learned about memory management, I thought it was intimidating because there's a lot of concepts, phrases, and terms that were pretty abstract and it's not readily seen on how these concepts affect your program directly. And so when you're programming your programming projects, it can be easy to forget on all of these concepts that you've learned and how they apply. But what I've learned over the years is that if you have a good background in memory management, it can really help you make some good design decisions and also have have some good coding practices. So in this video, I'm going to just give a brief overview on memory management and also I'll show you some examples to help make these abstract concepts more concrete. So my name is Henrik and I'm here to help you learn the foundations of software development. So let's get started. But before we begin, I'd like to mention that I do have a free workshop for you. It's called my Capstone Project Workshop. And in that workshop, I go over three secrets to coding your own Capstone project in just three months. Now, why did I create this workshop? The most common goal that I get from people who apply to my one-on-one -on -one programming mentorship program is to, quote, be more proficient at creating projects. You and I both know that learning how to code is more than just memorizing code syntax. It's about applying your coding skills to real world projects that make you feel confident and capable. So if this sounds like you, you can download this workshop in the link in the description. And if you download it and watch it and pay attention to what it says, then you'll definitely build a good foundation to your software development journey. All right, so what is memory management? Simply put, memory management is the process of allocating and freeing up memory for data in your program. So when your program is running, you need to tell the compiler how much data you want to store. And then when you're done using that data, you need to tell the compiler that you're done using that data. And so in other words, you need to free up that data. And there's also a component in memory management where you need to keep track of where your data is located in memory. And that way you can store your data in the right memory locations and then free up data as well from those memory locations. And so I like to use the analogy of real estate. So in real estate, you have all these, all this land out there, and then you want to build a house. So first you need to claim some land, and then you want to claim that land so that no one else can claim that land and build their houses on, on that land. And so you claim some land, and then you build your house there, you do some stuff there in that land. And then when you're done with it, you take out your data or you take out your house, and then you free up that space and say that this land is now available for other people to use. And so when you do this, you make sure that other programs are not using your memory when you're using it. And then you also free it up so that other programs can use that memory when you're not using it. So there are two key ideas here when it comes to memory management. There's allocation, which is just assigning memory to your variables and data structures. And then there's deallocation, which is just freeing up that memory. For this brief overview on memory management, I'm just going to focus on two kinds of memory allocation. The first kind is static memory allocation, and the second one is dynamic memory allocation. So I have this program here, and basically what it does is it sums the, this array of integers. So we have this array of integers here, and then we have a sum variable that captures the sum of this array. And so let's just run this to see how it works. All right, there you go. So sum of array is 15. So in this example here, what I'm showcasing is static memory allocation. And we're doing static memory allocation with these variables here. And what is meant by static memory allocation is that we're calculating the size of our allocations during compile time. So when we compile this program, the compiler can look at these variables here and know immediately how much data to reserve or allocate for these variables. The nice thing about static memory allocation is that the compiler will automatically allocate this memory for you because it knows already during compile time how much memory to allocate for these variables. So when we enter the main function, the compiler will automatically allocate this memory in stack memory. And then when it exits the program, the compiler will free up that memory automatically for you. And stack memory is important because it's a fast, efficient, and safe kind of memory. But the only downside of stack memory is that it's limited in size. And so if you have a very big array, you don't want to store it on stack memory. You want to store it in what is called heap memory. 
Keep in mind heap memory because we're going to be talking about that in what is called dynamic memory allocation. But before we talk about dynamic memory allocation, I want to pose to you this question. What if we want to we want to calculate the sum of an array of integers, but we don't know how large that array is. All right, so here's a program where we ask the user to give us a size for the array that they want to sum. And then it also asks the user to input the array elements. And then after all of that is done, it calculates the sum and then it displays, displays the sum. So the nice thing about this program is that the array is not fixed and it can be an array of any kind of size. So we ask the user at runtime how big the array is going to be. And so this is what is called dynamic memory allocation. And that's because we allocate the array dynamically during runtime instead of compile time. So when we, when we determine the size of the array during compile time, that's called static memory allocation. But when we decide the size of, array, of the array during runtime, that's called dynamic memory allocation. So let's just run this, this program just to get an idea of how it works. So enter the size of the array, we'll say five again. So one, two, three, four, five. And then there you go, you get the same sum of the array. Let's run it again with a, with, a with a different size. Three, and then one, five, three. And then the sum of the array is nine. So there you go. So now we have more flexibility in this program. And this is why we care about dynamic memory allocation, because there are some instances where we have some data in our program, or we have an array or a set or a list in our program, and we don't know how big that list is or that array is going to be. And so in that in those cases, we need to use what is called dynamic memory allocation. So I'm just gonna go through this program. So we have an int array size here. This just holds the size of the array. And this is stat statically allocated. And then we ask the user to enter the size of the array. The user enters the size into array size. And then here we allocate memory for the array. So we have an array here called array. And then we use this function called malloc for memory allocation. And then we input the size of the array. And then we have to multiply it by the size of the int data type because our array is going to be an int array. So we use this to allocate memory for the array. And then if we check, if memory allocation is successful, because sometimes it can fail if there's not enough memory. So we check if that's successful. If it is successful, we continue. Then we ask the user to enter the array elements here. So we scan those in, and then we calculate the sum here, and then we display the sum here. And then at the end, you have to, you have to free up that memory yourself manually. So the thing about dynamic memory allocation is that it's not automatically done for you. You have to do it yourself as the developer. You have to manually allocate the memory here, and then you have to manually free up the memory here. So there are pros and cons for dynamic memory allocation. We have more functionality with this design. We can ask the user for the size. We can allocate memory how much, however much we want during runtime. But the downside is that we have to do it manually ourselves. Another advantage of dynamic memory allocation is that when you allocate memory for this array, it's going to be located in what is called heap memory. And heap memory is something that exists outside of these functions here. So these functions, they have their own stack memories, but when they're done being called, uh, the heap memory will still exist. But the thing here is that we do a free here at the end. So this array is not going to exist after this function is over because we manually free it here. But say we comment this out, if we comment this out here, and then we don't free that memory, that memory will still exist in the heap memory. So the advantage here is that this memory can actually exist across functions. But this, is, can, this can also be a disadvantage because if you don't manage your memory carefully, then you can have what is called a memory leak. And a memory leak is just when you start to lose memory over time because you never free up any of your memory. You just keep using memory, you just keep allocating memory and then you allocate and allocate, and then you start to lose memory available for your program. I really like this analogy for memory leaks. Think of a bucket, and every time you allocate memory, it's like you're putting water in that bucket. And then every time you free up memory, 
you're releasing that water in your bucket. So if you never free that water from your bucket, your bucket is not going to have as much space to put water in in the future. And over time, you might have so much water in your bucket that you can never or you can no longer put more water in your bucket. Another thing to note about dynamic memory allocation is that when you put this in your heap memory, your heap memory is not as fast as your static memory. So that's another thing to keep in mind. If you want to speed up your program, you want to start thinking of how you can put more of your data in your stack memory. But of course, if you don't have enough space in your stack memory, you have to put the larger data in your heap memory. And so there's, dis there's advantages and disadvantages for each kind of memory, for the stack memory and for the heap memory. And this is why it's really important to have this basic knowledge and understanding of memory management, because this is how you're going to make a difference in the performance of your programs. Another thing I'd like to point out is fragmentation. And fragmentation is just when you have unused memory gaps in your memory due to poor memory management. And so that's another thing to keep in mind as you're allocating and you're deallocating memory. If you're not doing it correctly or if you're allocating too much memory that you don't need, then this can lead to fragmentation. And if you have fragmentation and if you have memory leaks in your program, this can lead to poor performance and it can lead to your program slowing down over time. All right, so I showed you this example in C, but what if you don't code in C? What if you code in Python, Java, JavaScript, or some other higher level programming language? The nice thing about those programming languages is that they take care of the man memory management for you. So they, they do the static memory allocation and the dynamic memory allocation for you. And then they also have garbage collectors to clean up the memory for you. And so that's what's nice about those programming languages. But you do still need to care about memory management because references to variables are still a thing in those programming languages. And there are ways in which you can deal with these references in such a way that the garbage collectors cannot free up memory correctly. And so this is why you need to have a basic understanding of memory management. So memory management is important, not just for C programmers, but for all software developers in any kind of programming language. And this is actually why I recommend that programmers learn C. And every programmer should learn C because it gives you this foundational understanding of memory management. You start to be able to allocate memory manually through the malloc function and then free up that memory. And then you have to keep track of how you're using memory in C. And you, it's less forgiving in C on how you use your memory. And you can readily see the ramifications of poor memory management in C. And so if you get better if you if you're good at coding in C and you have good memory management when you start to learn the other programming languages you can pick those up really easily and you can make sure that you write clean code and have good coding practices and this was my experience I learned C first before these higher level programming languages so I had a basic understanding of memory management I understood references and I understood pointers and a static memory allocation, dynamic memory allocation. And because of this background, I was able to pick up easily these higher level programming languages. And I was, a, I was able to carry good coding habits because I understood how computers worked under the hood. And so this is why I recommend that you should learn C first before these other higher level programming languages. All right, there you go. Here's a basic overview of memory management. And memory management is just the process of allocating memory for data in your program and then freeing up that memory when you're no longer using it. And I talked about static memory allocation, dynamic memory allocation, stack memory, and heap memory. And I give you some examples on how, to, how these are shown in the programming language C. Like I mentioned earlier, I have a free workshop for you, my capstone project workshop. And in that workshop, I go over three secrets to coding your own capstone project in just three months. So if you want to become more proficient at creating your own projects, you want to move on from these tutorials and create your own projects, then be sure to check the link in the description and watch my coding workshop today. All right, that's it for this week's video. I hope it really helped you out. And if it did help you out, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And leave a comment down below what are some big takeaways you got about memory management. And if you have any other questions, feel free to let me know in the comments section and I'll be sure to answer you there. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.